Hello everyone, my name is Harry, and today I'm going to present you the results of the computer graphics project. In this project, the height of the terrain at every point is determined by the value of the red channel of the image track01.png. This information is read into self.image data by self.imageData equals im.2 bytes, where im is the file name of the image passed into the load function. The red channel information is then passed onto image pixel. The variable red then carries the normalized red channel value by dividing 255, as in 8-bit color space, the red channel value is between 0 and 255. Red equals float image pixel 0 divided by 255. Then, the depots, which denotes the height at every point in the terrain, could be set by depots equals red multiplied with stealth dot height scale. Where the red is the normalized red channel and height scale is a member variable of the terrain class, which is predefined to scale the height of the terrain by 75. The end result looks like this. In this task, it is required to set the position and the view target of the camera to ideal coordinates to facilitate game visuals. The position of the camera determines where the camera would be placed while well, the view target of the camera determines the specific point that the camera would be aiming at. As required in the project spec, the camera should be placed directly behind the racer's heading direction with a certain horizontal distance and maintains a certain vertical distance from the racer. As for the view target, the camera should always be aimed at a location directly above the racer. The sketch below illustrates the relationship between the racer, the camera position, and the camera view target. Where the purple dot denotes the view target of the camera, and the black arrow is racer's heading. In the graph, we have C1 equals C2 equals G follow cam offset, and L equals G follow cam look offset. In order to implement the above camera setting, two blocks of code are needed to set the position and the view target, respectively. The G view target and G view position are two lists with indices 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, denoting their x, y, and z coordinates. As can be seen from the graph above, the x and y coordinates of the view target should be the same as that of the racer. The Z coordinate of the view target should be the Z coordinate of the, of the racer plus the G follow cam look offset. As for the Z position of the camera, the Z coordinate of the view position should be the Z coordinate of the racer plus the G cam follow cam offset in order to keep a fixed predefined distance above the racer. The heading of the racer is stored in a VEX3 variable, with indices 0, 1, and 2 denoting its component vectors along the x, y, and z axis. In reality, only indices 0 and 1 of the racer's heading has a real meaning since the racer does not have directions along the z-axis. Since the heading of the racer is a combination of, it, of its x, y component vectors, the x and y coordinates of the wheel position should be the x and y coordinates of the racer's position plus the inverse of that of the racer's headings x and y component vector both multiplied by G follow cam offset. Since the x vector and the y vector are perpendicular, 
This would always result in the camera be positioned in the opposite direction of the racer's heading, and always maintains a horizontal distance equal to g follow cam offset to the racer, as presented in the sketch below. The following code is used to set the position of the camera. And the final result looks like this. The camera position, the camera target has all been set, and the camera now follows the racer in a predefined position behind and above the racer. In this task, it is required to load a racer model from the data provided to replace the race sphere that currently represents the racer. To replace the sphere with the model, it is necessary to specify the file path and set the self.model member variable to that path. After loading the new model, it is necessary to move the model to the racer's position, rotate the model to align with the racer's heading, and appropriately scale the model. To accomplish that, we need to combine three matrices to finish the transformation of the model. Firstly, we need a translation matrix to move the model to the racer's position. To do that, we could simply set the position of the model to be self.position. Secondly, we need a rotation matrix to align the heading of the model with the heading of the racer. To do that, we could simply set the heading of the racer to be the same of, as the model's heading. In addition, we need to define the y-axis of the model to be perpendicular to the terrain, which means the y-axis of the model will be pointing upwards instead of forwards. With the three variables above, we can generate a transform matrix that properly set the position and the heading of the racer using the loo.makeMat4 from the axis. Lastly, we could multiply this transform matrix with an scaling matrix so that the model could be scaled by 1.5 times along the x, y, and z axis. Also, we need to set the common uniforms and shader for the model. The final result now looks like this. The model's position is correctly placed as the original position for the Mega Racer. The heading of the model is also pointing towards the forward position, which is the same as the heading of the racer. And the model has been scaled by 1.5 times in three directions, so that the model looks more realistic compared to the size of the terrain. In this task, we are required to implement the basic lighting and shading for the game. This could be done by finishing the function max3 compute shading that ideally tells the RGB values of pixels representing the light reflected off the fragments, including the terrain and the racer. The function has five parameters, max3 material color, max3 wheel space position, max3 wheel space normal, max3 wheel space light pose, and max3 light color. Material color is a predefined material reflectance that determines how a material reflects light. Wheel space position represents the coordinates for triangles in the wheel space. Wheel space normal represents the normal of triangles in the wheel space. Wheel space light pose represents the position of the sound transformed from the word position 
of the sun, and light color represent the predefined sunlight color. G sunlight color equals not nine, not point eight, not point seven. Firstly, we need to compute the direction from the surface towards the sun using the point light simulation method. When we had the direction from the surface to the sun, we could generate the intensity of the incoming light from the sun to the surface, which factors in the angle between the surface normal and the direct sunlight. Also, we need to factor in the color of the sunlight to generate the final result of the incoming light. When we had the direction, intensity, and the color of the incoming light, towards the surface, we could compute the outgoing light, which is light reflected by the surface. The outgoing light comprises of two parts, direct outgoing light and global ambient light. The direct outgoing light is determined by the incoming light intensity and the color and the material reflectance. The material reflectance represents the reflectiveness of a certain material regarding different light spectrums. For example, a red object reflects a red color more than other colors. The ambient outgoing light is a simple simulation of real-world ambient lighting. This could be done by applying the, global sem the same global ambient light to every surface regardless of the direction of their surface normal. Finally, we could add the two kinds of outgoing light to create the final outgoing light. The final result is shown below. We can see that the lighting and shading is mostly correct in terms of the direction and the intensity on different angles of objects. The light color is a bit warmish compared to the uh, pale white color that in the game before. There are also ambient lightings in the shadow area so that the shadow area is not pitch black, which feels more realistic than the pure black shadows. Last but not least, we are missing some important factors of lighting, like the specular highlights that would appear on the razor if the razor's surface is made with metal. This simulation of real-world lighting did not consider many other aspects of real-world lighting. Firstly, we have ignored situations when certain materials could polarize lights and make some light refractions. Secondly, we ignored things like the mist or dust floating in the air that would scatter and absorb incoming lights. Thirdly, we ignored special materials that are azeotropic or the material's subsurface effects. Last but not least, we haven't considered complex shadow effects in the game. Below are the references used in this presentation. Thanks for watching.